Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the medieval barbet and fillet. The barbet and fillet is a combination of headwear, which I'm wearing right now, that enjoyed popularity throughout the 13th and early 14th century. It consists of two main pieces. The fillet, which is the band wrapped around the top of my head, uh, which began in the early medieval period as a soft strip of fabric that you would tie around like a headband and pin your veil to. However, when the barbette comes into fashion, it evolves into this sort of more structured, rigid headpiece. The barbette, on the other hand, is the wide strip of fabric that is wrapped around my chin. According to some, it was introduced by Eleanor of Aquitaine as a way to disguise a softer chin or provide a bit of a facelift, although I haven't found primary sources to back that up. Either way, we see it throughout the 13th century and into the early 14th century. There are a couple of different variables in the construction of a barbet and fillet because we don't have an extant example, and so we have to take some guesses as to their construction. The first question that I had to figure out making mine was whether I should construct them as a flat strip of fabric, like the ones I just showed you, or as a circle or a little crown that's already sewn up. One of my favorite bits of documentation comes from a moralized Bible written in France between 1225 and 1249. In it, we see thin, plain strips of fabric wound around the head and secured with pins at the side. Mostly reenactors seem to construct fillets as sewn circles, but uh, I think the pinned strip method is very underrepresented and very practical because it's a lot more adjustable. Also, I know the idea of wearing a pin on your head is scary, but um, I've been doing it for a while and I've never been poked. It's also a lot more streamlined and neat than any kind of lacing or button on the top or back of the head would be. Moving on to the mid 13th century, we see pleated examples on British statues including the Gloucester Cathedral and Dryborough Abbey, which is relatively local in the grand scheme of this video. Um, and I knew those names off the top of my head. I did not have to call my boyfriend for pronunciation advice. Around the same time, we see taller fillets worn by the ladies in the statues at the Naumburger Dom in Germany. These are paired with crowns or uh, decorative circlets, which is a really cute look that I would love to put together eventually, but I think it's also the basis for the heavily embroidered or jeweled toques, which are worn by some older reenactors, and those I don't think are as well grounded in historical fact. However, we do see some decoration on certain examples, such as gold edges, I believe also on the ladies of the Naumburg Dome, um, and we also see some ruffled edges. And speaking of ruffles, we see quite a few examples of fillets with ruffly or fluted tops. This could be a feature woven into the fillet, which is not great for reenactors because that'll be a lot harder to replicate. However, there is also the possibility that these represent fillets with ruffles sewn onto the top, and that's a lot easier for us to do without specialized weaving skills and equipment. Possibly the most well-known example of a ruffled fillet in a manuscript is the Codex Manessa, which dates back to the early 14th century. Notably, barbettes and fillets are worn by women from all kinds of statuses and backgrounds across society. We see them on noblewomen, we see them on queens, and we see them on blacksmiths, and uh, lower to medium status women as well. They're paired with a variety of hairstyles and hair options, we see them worn over St. Birgitta style cloth coifs. We see them worn primarily, I think, in Germany over loose curly hair. We see braids on the ladies from the Naumburg Cathedral. And um, in my case, I've gone for a silk hairnet, which is uh, quite common across manuscripts in Britain and France. Because they're so quick and easy to sew, I've decided to sew two sets of barbettes and fillets today. So let's get into the simpler version. My first barbette and fillet set is going to be based on the moralized Bible and uh, the Holcomb Bible, which shows a blacksmith, a female blacksmith, working while wearing a hairnet, barbette, and fillet, 
So this look will take us from the 1220s all the way to the early 14th century. The common denominator in both images is a more narrow strip. We see a range of sizes. So for this pattern, I've cut two long, thin rectangles of cloth, and I'll put the dimensions on the screen, but you'll want to measure your own head and uh, figure out what width would look most flattering on you. There has been some debate about how the barbet and fillet are constructed and how they're stiffened so that they're not sort of mushy. I personally prefer a single layer of fabric when possible because I think it looks a bit crisper and neater. So I'm just going to hem my strips of fabric on all four sides with a whip stitch. I forgot how difficult hemming around a camera is, but um, I got through it in the end. I'd also like to take a moment to uh, acknowledge the sheer amount of hemming that I had to do for this video, and it is only going to get worse. The next big issue in barbet and fillet construction is that of stiffening, and we're not entirely sure how that was done. We have literary references to starch used in a laundry context in the early 15th century, and possibly as early as the 1390s. So it doesn't quite cover the peak of the barbet and fillet trend, however I think starch is a more plausible solution than something like paste buckram, and I think it gives a very neat, crisp look. I think it is plausible that starch could have been used uh, in laundry a little before it was actually written down, because that sort of domestic thing doesn't show up as much in written accounts anyway. So this is conjectural. This is entirely conjectural, but it works, and I think it is at least historically plausible. So once I finished hemming both strips, all I had to do was dunk them in starch, iron them until <laughs> they took on the consistency of cardboard, which uh, never fails to amuse me, and pin them around my head. I've used two small brass straight pins to secure them, and again, I've never had any problems poking myself, so um, yeah, I think it worked quite well. Moving on, I decided to sew a more complicated version of the barbet and fillet as our second look for this video. So I decided to base this set off the ruffled styles worn in the Codex Manessa. To begin with, I cut a very long strip of linen to make the ruffle. Actually, it was so long that I had to cut it in two pieces, and in order to join them up, I folded over the raw edges on both pieces, lapped them over each other, and whip-stitched them. This is a method commonly used in um, the making of 16th century ruffs, which are uh, usually cut in a couple of strips joined together, and it's also useful for 18th century, so it's a, a good technique all around. Once I had those joined up, I hemmed the whole thing on three sides, leaving one long side unhemmed. Then I put in two rows of running stitch to create stroked gathers in order to gather my ruffle strip to the circumference of my fillet. To make the fillet itself, I cut a wide strip of linen, or relatively wide, it didn't end up being that wide in the end. I think I started with a 7cm strip, not counting seam allowance, and I wound up taking it down to 5cm because it was too tall for my taste. You can make it a bit taller than that if you want though, uh, again it is up to personal taste. I folded under all of the raw edges on my wide strip and placed it over my gathered ruffle. Some people will mark their ruffles at regular intervals and uh, pleat it very evenly, but I used the tried and true and semi-trusted eyeball technique. I did my best, <laughs> and I think it worked out. I secured the ruffle onto the main headband of the fillet with a whip stitch, and then I folded it in half and whip stitched down the other side to finish it off and encase the ruffle in the main body of the fillet. All I had to worry about then was the unfinished ends on both sides, which I pinned together and joined up with a whip stitch to make a circlet thing. You can leave this as a strip and just whip stitch um, the main band shut on both sides, but I decided that while I prefer the pinned approach, I should probably try to make a sewn circlet for the sake of this video to demonstrate different techniques. I like it significantly less 
than the pin technique, so this has reaffirmed my biases. For the chin strap or barbette, I decided to go with a slightly more shaped design than uh, the first set that we made. So I um, made a long, slightly wider rectangle of fabric, but I tapered it in under the chin a little bit so it would be shaped going around my head. You can shape it more extremely than this. Some of them seem to get quite wide at the back of the head in manuscripts, but um, I was going for a Naumburg cathedral type look with mine, so uh, this is what I went with. Again, I cut that out and hemmed it on all four sides, which was slightly more annoying because uh, one of the long sides was no longer exactly on the grain. Again, this barbette and fillet set was starched in order to give it some stiffness and some uh, moxie, although uh, with the double layer on the fillet it didn't need it as much but um, I'm happy with how it turned out. So to recap, we've got a very simple barbette and fillet that would work for a noblewoman, but also for someone like a blacksmith's wife. And we have a fancier, more German or Swiss variant, which uh, is a bit more glamorous. It does look a bit like a pastry or a chef's hat, but uh, I still like the look. That is all I have for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching if you've watched this far. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. I've also linked my Instagram in the description and my Ko-Fi or Coffee if you'd like to uh, help us make more videos and help us make better videos in the future. Thank you again for watching. We'll be back yet again. Yeah. <laughs> Balls. You were so close. I was so close. <laughs> I'll be back again with another video very soon. And um, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.